All right. I wanted to do a couple of tool reviews today. Tools that I've never even opened, but that I've wanted to for a while. These are from Viha, I guess. Is that how you would say it? It's a German company. W-I-H-A. They make uh, some very quality tools. And they also have ESD safe, which is electrostatic discharge safe. Um, kind of something I have never paid attention to most of my life. Um, but I want to work on older electronics and I don't want to kill them with static. And as I am in a basement, uh, you know, static can definitely accrue. Um, yeah, you know, it... so, uh, let's crack it open. This is a ESD safe chip lifter item number two, seven, nine, two, zero. So, it's so satisfying. Surface resistance of handle is 10 to the 6th minus 10 to the 9th ohms. And if you would like to do the math on that, that is on you. It says it is chrome vanadium molybdenum. Wait, molyb molyb molybdenum. Says it is chrome, vanadium, molybdenum, tool steel, or CVM. It's made in Germany. Uh, 5.7 inch or 145 millimeter OAL. And I do not know what OAL stands for, but uh, I'm sure it doesn't matter. So it is essentially a pre-bent flathead <laughs> with a curve to it and a little tiny ridge. Um, so, uh, you know, if you had a board in front of you, uh, you would put this underneath and use some gentle prying wedging action. Uh, Non-insulating, anti-static, Anyway, very nice little tool. We're going to set that aside and move on to the next, which uh, I'm probably the most excited about of the three remaining tools. This is a VHA 75093 ESD safe micro bit set. It says slotted Phillips. Torx, similar ohm dissipation rating, uh, 16 pieces, I'm assuming that counts the handle, uh, slotted 1.5, 2, 2.5, and 3 millimeter, Phillips bits number 0, 0, 0, and 1. Torx T6, T7, T8, T9, T10, T15, T20, and a 100 millimeter bit extension. And, uh, you know, metrics is fine. I use metric all the time. Hopefully it won't be a problem with all these uh, American electronics. So again, it's um, such a quality feeling tool. It's, it's quite hefty, heftier than it would appear. Um, and again, non-insulating, anti-static on the barrel. And this one says number 280, where this one says 279. I'm going to have to find out what that means. 
maybe it's their um, product code or, or something. I don't know. Again, made in Germany. Uh, wow, look at all these excellent little tiny bits. This thing replaces so many different tools of mine, which I will have to keep just for fun. But uh, I have this Craftsman set, and the blue is Philips. I believe it's a T1. Yes, it's a, or number number one, not T1, because it's not Torx. Uh, it's Philips number one. So that bit is uh, right there. Um, but it also has the smaller sizes, which you never know when you'll need. So I replace that. And uh, here I have um, a T8, T9, and T10 Torx Craftsman. Um, these are fairly nice, but they're not ESD safe. And, uh, well, I already covered that. So let's see here. Uh, take the T20 bit out. And you just kind of pull it out. And put it in there. And look at that. So yes, this is the uh, micro bit set from Viha. Or if you prefer to say Viha, it doesn't quite have the same ring to it. Um, it's quite nice. I look forward to using it. Next we have the magnetizer, demagnetizer from Viha. And it says it is 2.1 inch by 2 inch by 1.1 inch. It is marked with Super C8 magnets. And I do not know what a C8 magnet is, but I imagine it's rather powerful. It says, to magnetize, lead tool slowly through the positive opening. To demagnetize, guide tool slowly through the minus opening. The uh, part number is 40010, which is actually printed on there. And here we go. This one... I imagine I should just use a dummy tool here. Oh yeah, it's got a strong, strong magnetic pull on it. Must be those C8 magnets, right? And this should now be magnetized. And look at that, it is magnetized. This is actually a screw from the back of a Commodore. Oops. Yeah, quite magnetic. And this tool was not previously magnetized. So let's try the demagnetize then. And I've seen this, I mean, this is a pretty standard design. Um, you slowly step down the magnetization back and forth down the stairs and then it's it's still just just barely magnetic you know what have I done it's ruined now more time maybe down the stairs down the stairs and down the stairs I don't know so maybe this tool is better at magnetizing than it is demagnetizing or maybe you just need to use it wildly No. 
I don't know, Viha. Maybe this one needs some work. Maybe someone can tell me why I'm doing it wrong. Anyway, moving on to the last tool. This is not from Viha. I know you're shocked. This is actually an IC extractor, model SS08. And if I'm understanding this correctly, the name of the company is Engineer. Uh, copyright 2019, Engineer Incorporated. Um, so this is um, basically a more advanced version of, uh, of your classic IC extractor. And these are more along the lines of um, bend to fit. And I'm not 100% certain, but I believe this is more of a spring action feel to it. Let's, let's crack it open. And I'll go through the documentation, if you want to call it that. Okay. Engineer IC extractor. Yes, this is this is certainly more of a spring action to it. And I think that'll be nice because you don't have to pre-bend. Like this is it it this is like the cheapest metal known to man here. This is it does the job, but when you want something that does more than just the job, and maybe you can actually enjoy using it, perhaps this might be better. It's got more of a, a tweezing action to it. And uh, it's got this adjustable pole here. So the smaller your IC, Remember, it says 8 to 42 pins. The smaller your IC, the more you'd want to clamp this down. And, and all you do is like kind of like a, an eighth of a turn left, and then you can move this freely. And then kind of an eighth of a turn back to tighten. And it's, uh, it feels really nice. It's, it's the highest quality chip extractor I have ever held for certain. And we will just put this on the breadboard for the purposes of extraction. And if I recall correctly, one of the pins were bent on this, but it shouldn't, shouldn't matter. So, um... Then you uh, simply just kind of adjust that down to about the size you want it. And then you have a nice spring action clamp, apply pressure to the surface. Ah, yeah. Not bad. Didn't really bend any pins, so that's always a plus. So yeah, that's a nice little chip extractor. And let's see what other literature it has here. I do not know Japanese well enough to read the instructions on this. But um there are a couple of English items here. 8 to 42, which we covered, that means pins. Um, something about 32 grams. And I'm assuming that that relates to the... I don't know. 
ideal for extracting 8 to 42 pin ICs in one single operation. Squeeze clip and hold ICs tightly. Also, please make sure that IC is desoldered completely before use of SS08, which uh, on a breadboard, it certainly was desoldered. So yeah, that's the uh, engineer IC extractor. A lot of people swear by the old Radio Shack IC extractor model, and uh, I've never used one myself. But uh, this looks a little bit more robust. And I definitely wanted a tool to last a lifetime. And this may be it. So yeah, just a quick recap. Um, IC extractor. Chip extractor. Which is not the same. But um, perhaps could be used well in concert. A uh, nice little micro bit set to replace many different tools. And a very mysterious magnetizer, demagnetizer. Um, please let me know what I'm doing wrong. If anyone has this particular model, um, maybe there's a trick to it. Maybe I wasn't going agonizingly slow enough. Yeah, that might be it. Um, by the way, I wanted to address one final thing before moving on. Unless otherwise noted, none of these are paid promotions or reimbursed promotions. I haven't received any of these products for free. These are just the result of my own research and, you know, wanting to put together kind of like a a dream workbench, if you will. And uh, I'll get into that more in future videos. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching.